we thought we'd go back and check out the 1990s version and see, is it still any good? So if you haven't seen it before, it's set in Derry in the 1960s. Seven kids are being terrorized by this clown. He takes different forms or whatever will fear them and tries to terrorize them and maybe even try and kill some off. The movie's set in the 60s, but then it's also set in the, in the late 90s, I guess, or in the early 90s um, when the kids are a bit more adult and they're looking back in their lives and saying, shit, that was pretty terrifying. Now he's back. Now we have to deal with it again. It stars John Ritter, it stars Tim Curry as the infamous uh, Pennywise the Clown, and it also stars the late, and I think the great, Jonathan Brandis. So does it hold up after all these years? Well, the movie's 27 years old now, which is pretty old if you ask me. I grew up in the 90s, and this movie absolutely terrified the crap out of me. Um, I remember being afraid of clowns for a while, my sister hated clowns, but everyone else I knew when they said, are you scared of clowns, they'd always bring up Stephen King's It from the 1990s. And shit, is it still scary? Yeah, in parts it's definitely still scary. Tim Curry is certified awesome in this film. Um, his laugh, his jokes, his beep beep, and his craziness in this film is uncanny and it's, it's gonna be hard to top with this new movie coming out. Tim Curry's still as good as you remember him being. Um, he's perfectly cast in the role. I actually really loved all the 1960s stuff. All the kid acting and Seth Green and Jonathan Brandis were all really good in this movie. In fact, it was definitely the best part of the movie. Uh, getting through the first part, because this movie is in two parts and it goes for three hours if you put those two parts together and that's what I've sat through this last night. The whole first part of the movie is basically set in the 1960s with the kids and it's all really good. It's very Goonies-esque, it's very Stand By Me. The kids are really good actors, but it's the stuff in the present that kind of brings it down. Not that the acting's bad, it's just kind of boring. Nothing really happens. And these actors are kind of reliving their childhoods in a way. And all you want it to do is just stay in the childhood, stay in the time in the 1960s where it's talking about their you know, past lives. And all I wanted to do was find out more about these younger kids and what their story was. And it kept going back and forth to the present and I just didn't care for it. And I think that's because it's a clown. Like clowns and a kid makes sense, that's terrifying. But clowns and adults makes it kind of just weird, I think. So maybe if they change the form of it for the adults, maybe it might have been different and maybe it might have been scary. The end of this film is really disappointing. They've spent three hours basically setting up this big final climatic ending where the, the now adults of the Losers Club are going to go up against it in his final formation. And you don't really know what that formation is until they step into the tunnels and the sewers one last time. And you find that it's kind of this giant alien. It looks like Stan Winston's off day. And while the special effects of the monster isn't too bad, the special effects of setting the monster in the film is awful. It's like something from the 1960s. It looks like Clash of the Titans with the skeletons. The final scene and how they beat him I'm not even kidding you, is them literally running up to it and pushing it over. Like they've been battling this thing their entire lives. How did it get down to just them pushing it over? Come on, give me something more. Three hours of my life, I'm never getting back. Give me something more. And even the final climactic scene with the kids when they're taking on the monster is a little bit underwhelming. There's a lot of cool scenes in this movie. The opening sequence with a girl on a trike as she gets killed by it is so memorable. The second I saw it starting, I was like, holy shit, everything's coming back from this movie and everything you remember is here and it's all still as terrifying as you remember it, which is awesome. And nothing really falls flat. I mean, it's been 27 years since probably I've seen this movie and everything is still as terrifying as it was back then. I really love the sequence with Beverly stuck in the bathroom after she's trying to hide from her abusive dad and the balloon starts coming out of the drain and you're just like, holy shit. He's in the fucking drain. How did he get in the drain? He's everywhere. And it kind of just made you feel unsafe that anywhere these kids can go, even in their homes, in their bathrooms, it is always going to be there terrorizing them. And I loved that feeling. There was definitely some great horror aspects, definitely some great acting. There was big names. In the 90s, a lot of these actors were pretty big names. John Ritter was huge in the time. This was the breakout role for Jonathan Brandis. But the standout role, obviously, is Tim Curry as Pennywise the Clown. He is unbelievable in this role. Every scene that he's in, he absolutely steals, and you just want to see more of Pennywise the Clown. And with this new movie coming out, Bill Skarsgård's going to have a really tough time beating out Tim Curry's version of It. 
So all in all, is Stephen King's It still any good? Well, it's going to be a big yes for me. I love this movie. Uh, it's still fantastic. It's still got great scares in it. Tim Curry is amazing in it. The only unfortunate thing was I feel like the ending of both parts where the kids took on and then the adults took on It. Um, for me, they fell a bit flat. They've got a huge lead ups to these parts and then they just nothing basically. I'd love the new movie to take those parts and make them so much bigger. There's such an opportunity I feel like if it was just written better. Now I can't remember if it was Stephen King's writing that did that so I'm not going to blame anyone but as long as those scenes are bigger in this movie and they make such more of an in impact in the ending I don't think we've got anything to worry about. I think the new movie is going to be great. This movie is great if you have your time. It was very hard for me to find this movie. By chance I found it on DVD. But it's not on Netflix, it's not on Google Play, it's not on Hulu, so if you do find it, good luck. But I highly recommend the original 1990s classic of Stephen King's It. Well that's it for another review, I'm Ryan from Souls and Any Good, and if you love this movie review and you love movies, make sure you hit the subscribe button and comment below and let us know your thoughts on Stephen King's It if you've seen it recently. And if you have any other ideas for another So Is It Still Any Good, make sure you let us know in the comments too because we'd love to hear it. And until next time, hopefully we'll see you in the cinema.